Hello there, it's Matthew Maddock here from Photomad. Uh, I've started selling the Cactus range of transceivers and speedlights, and I know there's a little bit of confusion as to exactly how they work, so I thought I'd do a short video, talk you through what they are, what they can do, what they can't do, and uh, basically how I use them with the Fujifilm system. Right, so let's get started. This is the transceiver unit here. A transceiver means that it's a transmitter and receiver so that you don't have to buy dedicated units, you just buy uh, multiple transceiver units and they can be used as either a transmitter with the button there or a receiver using this little switch here. Now they're incredibly easy to set up. If you want to use them as a receiver, which is what you would do if you use them on a flash, they have the groups here. So basically to change groups it's as easy as just pressing the group button that you want. You have the menu system here, which is very easy to get into. There's two buttons here, that's the menu button, OK button and a scrolly wheel button. One thing you will have to do with the transceiver is if you're using a Canon or a Nikon speed light, you have to tell it which speed light it is so that it can set the profile. So basically all you do is you go into the menu, you tell it the speed light, we choose here Canon and then I've got here a 580EX and we just literally press OK, press use and there you go. I don't know if you can see that but it now tells you that there is a Canon 580EX attached to this trigger. Uh, if you want to use it as a trans transmitter, we switch the button over to transmitter Again, the group buttons, you can tell it which ones you want to fire, so we can turn groups on and off as easily as that. Okay, and the power is controlled through, let's see if I can get that closer so you can see it. Power is controlled with this dial here, and basically all you do is, to select the power for channel A, you just have A on, and then you dial in a power setting for that. To B, you can change the power for that one, and so on and so forth. Now, once they're all set, if you select all of them and dial the wheel, it'll then proportionally change the power for each channel. So you don't have to then go and dial in each channel. If you just want to bring up the, the light for, for the whole set, all you have to do is just dial that one with all of the channels set. It's literally as easy as that. Now, this isn't a TTL system. So if you're using it on any camera, you have to control the flashes manually. What it does do is it uses the TTL controls in the flash to control the power wirelessly. So I can, can change the power of a Canon speed light or a Nikon speed light from the camera using this unit, but it's not a TTL system. So effectively you're using the flashes in manual, which is how I use flashes anyway all the time. The other part to the system is their own dedicated speed light. Okay, and this has a receiver built into it. So if you wanted uh, a one flash system, you could buy one transceiver and one speed light, and from that transceiver, we can control the power on this speed light. So to use this, we just select the group. I've already got group A selected on here. So as long as they're on the same channel, Hopefully you can see this. If I just dial the dial the power on here, can you see the, the power changing on the speed light? And we can do that all from the position of the camera, which is the big advantage of it. It has a zoom on it. Uh, we have a menu system here, so we can change the channel if you have any problems with the radio channels. Uh, we can set it to different optical slave modes or we can set this as a master so it can control other flashes. There's quite a lot to it. It has the typical built-in bounce card and extra diffuser. They also have a set of like the Stofen filters for it. Uh, they come in a white, yellow and blue set so you can change the colour of the flash as well. Right, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so we can see both of these flashes being controlled from one transceiver. Right, so I have here a 
Cactus V6 transceiver with the Canon 580EX2 speed light. And the first thing we'll do is we'll turn on the speed light, and we'll make sure that it's set to TTL mode. Then we'll turn the transceiver to receive mode because we want it to receive the signal from the transmitter that's going through on the camera. I've already set this up to be to tell it that there's a 580EX on here, and I have it on channel B because later I'm going to have the cactus flash on channel A so we can show how we can control the two things. Now that's literally all you have to do. Now from the transmitter, which would normally be attached to the camera but for just demonstration I'm having it here, we can dial in the power setting. Okay we've got it on channel B, that's on channel B and I don't know if that's possible to see on the video but as I dial this on the transmitter the power changes on the receiver. Now it works in thirds of stops, so that's 8, 16, 7, 0.7, 16.3, 16. Now if I press the dial button in and then dial it, it goes in full whole stops, so you don't have to spend hours dialing either way. I press it in again and then it goes back down to third stops again. Just to test the power, we just fire it like that. So if I go up to full power, it does a full power flash, and if I dial it right down, to 128th, it'll do a very small flash. I know that's quite hard to see on the video. Right, the next step is I'll get the Cactus RF60 speed light set up on channel A and we'll show how we can control two speed lights from the same place. So this is the Cactus RF60. We have a very simple on off button here. Once you have it set up, it's literally very, very easy to control. All you have to do is you have to set it into that's manual mode, we have to set it into slave mode and then choose the group. So group A, B, C, D. So you can see here on the transmitter, I have group A, B is off, C and D, and I've got them all set to different powers. So as we scroll through here, you can see group A is set to a quarter power, group B is turned off, so you get a reflection of what's happening on the transmitter on the speed light itself. So group C is set to an eighth power, which is what it is on here, and group D I've got set to a sixteenth power. What I want for this is I want this on group A, and that fires. There's a test button on here so we can see that's firing. And from here, if I just want to control group A, I can change the power on here, and you can see the power going up and down on the speed light. So all that's done from the position of the camera. So if you've got this set in an awkward place to get to, or if you don't want to be moving around your set on location or even in the studio, you don't have to. You can do everything from the camera, which saves a huge amount of time. Okay, now I'm going to move on. I'm going to set both of the flashes up together, and we're just going to show how they both work together, even though they're different speed lights. Right, so in this setup, it's a two-speed light setup. So what we've got here is we've got one transceiver for the camera that you will always need. We have... The cactus flash, which has a built-in receiver, so we don't need a transceiver on the bottom of that. And we have the Canon speed light here on a transceiver, which is set to receive mode. Now, for every speed light, you need an extra transceiver. So if I added another, say, a Nikon speed light, which I could do, it doesn't have to all be Canon and Canon speed lights. You can mix Canon and Nikon and the cactus speed light. I think there are a few others that work on it as well. I have a feeling there's some Pentax ones on there that, that it has profiles for. So just to be clear, because some people think that you maybe only need one transmitter and it will communicate with the speed light directly. It doesn't. You need to have the transceiver on the speed light, unless in the case of the Cactus, it has that receiver built into it. Okay. So I've got channels A and B set on here and I've got the power dialed in on the back and I can control the power of both flashes by changing the power level using the dial here and that changes both channels and if I fire off a test fire that will shoot both of them. If I want to change the power on just the A group, so that's just the cactus, I can just press A and change the power on the back of here like that. If I just want to change the power of the cannon, I just press B and dial the power again like that. It's as easy as that. Now, they're both set to different power levels now. So if I want to change the power level of the system as a whole, I select both channels and dial them both. 
and that will change the power proportionally between the two. It's, it's incredibly easy to set up. Once you've got your group set in your channel, which is channel one, unless you're having a problem, I don't really see much point in changing that. You set, tell the receiver what speed light's attached to it, and it's that's it, there's nothing else to do. It has a USB connection in the side for updating firmware. If there's any problems or there's new speed lights, they will send out a firmware. What I do is before every unit is sent out, I make sure the correct firmware, the latest firmware, is installed on each unit so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the batteries are inside here. There's two, just two AAs, standard batteries. The speed light takes four standard batteries. It's got TTL pass-through for Canon, Fuji, and Nikon, so you could attach this to your camera and put a TTL speed light on the top, and that speed light will work in TTL mode. This speed light, to be completely clear, is not TTL. It's using the receiver, uses the TTL in the speed light to set the power, but it is not a TTL system. It's effectively a manual flash like this, so you have to set the power manually. I hope that small video just helps people understand exactly how the Cactus system works. This is the transceiver on top of an XT1. It is quite a large unit, but it doesn't stop you getting to anything. And I just find it so convenient because all you have to do is stay at your camera. You can control all the power from your camera. You can add as many of these as you like. If you have the Cactus unit, which I think is absolutely great, you don't have to have another transceiver. If you have existing Canon and Nikon speed lights from a, a system you have already, you don't need to go out and buy new speed lights. You can control the power from any camera. It doesn't have to be a Fuji, it could be any camera you wanted. So you could have Nikon speed lights on a Canon system, any combination you wanted. I just think it's a fantastic system. It's a great price with so many features and Cactus are very good at supporting it with new updates when necessary. Thanks for watching and I really hope that helps sort out a few problems that people have been having understanding exactly how the system works.